Hey everybody, Sean here from VideoGamingAct.com. Here we are today back in downtown Niketsu Super Awesome Field Day, grabbing the real power of Ichijo achievement. This is to beat the entire single player using Ichijo to win every single event. Now the game is going to be pretty Japanese heavy, so I'm going to try my best to walk you through the menus so you don't mess anything up. Just hit the Y button to get past the intro cutscene and then hit Y again to get past the title screen. Once you get to your first menu, just hit Y. This is going to set the game to single player and also set your team as the Niketsu team, which Ichijo is going to be part of. Next screen is going to be the event order. Very important that you do not change this. If you play the events out of the default order, you will void the achievement. The screen after that is just going to be the background music. Once again, just keep that the same. Just hit Y through both of them to confirm. Y again to start the first event, and then you should be on the character select screen. To pick Ichijo, what you have to do is you have to press left once. He's going to look like this. He should have 140 health. That's how you know you've chosen the right character for this achievement. All right, up first is going to be the first event. This is going to be cross country. Right before the gun goes off, make sure you move your character up and punch the two characters right next to you. Then you want to start sprinting. Make sure you take the upper path so you can avoid jumping into the sand pit. Then you are going to start the second screen. It's going to start with a straight sprint. Then one once the wall ends, you are going to have to arc your turn right here to make it through the door. Try to get the timing right on that so you don't turn too wide and accidentally end your sprint. Then you should be in the dining room. Make sure you take the bottom path and then jump over the toys and then make it to this screen. Make sure you start moving up and then you want to jump at the top of the walkway. Then when you climb the wall, try to be on the right side of the other players so they don't hit you when all of you get to the top. Then you are going to get to the next screen, which is going to be the roof race. Very important that you make sure you prioritize trying to find a weapon on one of these two screens, and it's going to help out with a little trick later on. But at the same time, you also want to make sure you try to keep as best of a position as you can. But if you're still not in first, as long as you get a weapon, you should be able to take advantage of the trick, which is going to make the rest of the achievement a lot easier. So starting off, what you want to do is you want to try to throw as many back elbows as you can. Then you have a big jump onto the green roof. This is where I found my weapon, which is going to be the stick. Then it's a straight sprint to end the first screen. Make sure you jump down onto the blue roof and then you want to sprint, but also go diagonally down so you can get onto the wall and then a big jump to get onto the brick wall. Then the next screen, it's going to be very important that you make sure you come in first on this one. My best advice is just to take the bridge since the AI will generally try to jump down and go for the swim. As long as you stick to the land, you should be good. And as long as you come in first on this screen, you should be good for this little trick. So the way this trick works is you have to make sure you're in first place and you start sprinting. You have to be the first player on the bushes. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure you line yourself up with this vertical climb right here. Then if you happen to have a weapon in your hand, if you keep swinging, you can actually hit the AI and they will actually get stuck here and not be able to climb this vertical surface. And you can pretty much keep this up until they run out of health, which should automatically knock them out of the round. So it's going to be a little tricky. You want to be a little careful and not hit them while they're jumping. The reason for that is if you do that, you might smack them into the next screen, which is going to keep them in the game and also give them the lead. And the best way to avoid this problem is just to make sure you make frequent saves using the in-game save system. So every time you knock a significant amount of health off, just make sure you make a save. And if they do go flying off screen, just make sure you load up from that save and just stay here until they are all knocked out. You should have the entirety of the time limit, which should be pretty significant since this is still the beginning of the race. So you're going to have plenty of time, no need to rush. But once you knock out the last person, the lap is pretty much yours. Once you're ready, just make sure you start making the climb and then head to the next screen. During these next few screens, what I like to prioritize is trying to find a health potion. So before leaving the wall, I like making a save and then backing up from it in case I don't find one. The reason for that is since your character has such low base health, if you happen to find a health potion, you should be able to buff them up to a total health of 255, which is going to be way more useful since we need to keep them alive for the entirety of the game. So try your best to find a health potion and then make sure you drink it and that should pretty much set you off for the next few rounds in terms of the health disparity. So for this screen, make sure you take the water path. If the AI is not dead yet for whatever reason, your next best opportunity to kill them is going to be during the water segment. Pretty much do the same thing. Have a weapon in hand and just keep smacking them. If they happen to stay underwater too long, they should drown and you should be able to knock them out that way. So you're going to have a few screens of water segments in order to do that. 
once you make it out of the water, it's time to do this screen. Once again, if you find any health potions along the way, make sure you drink them. It's going to be faster to take the water, so jump down instead of sticking to the dirt path. And then just swim to the next screen. One big jump to get over the sand pit, and it's going to be a straight shot to the finish line. Then we are going to start the second lap, which is going to be the exact same thing. However, we are starting with a weapon in hand, so it's going to be a little bit of an easier run, at least in the early on. So character select screen, make sure you hit left to stick with Ichijo, and then we're going to start. Make sure you start moving up and start smacking as many people as you can. Once again, make sure you take the upper path so you can avoid the sand pit and get an early start on the second screen. Big sprint here, make sure you try your best to stay in first place and make sure you get that arc right. Once again, utilize that weapon the best you can to smack anyone who's going to be right next to you. Then you have the dining room, make sure you take the bottom path once again, and then we should still now be in the lead. Make sure you go up on the walkway and then make sure you're the first on the wall make sure you climb as far to the right as possible so you can avoid any incidental contact especially if they also have weapons which they are going to throw at you once all of you get to the top then on to the roof race make sure you take advantage of attacking big jump and then a straight sprint forward and then we are on the second part jump down onto the blue roof diagonal down to get onto the wall and then big jump to get onto the brick wall and then a straight sprint forward back on the bridge make sure you are in first place on this screen so we can take advantage of the trick again make sure you stick to the bridge path and don't take the water and definitely make sure you come in first now back to the apartment buildings to take advantage of the trick again make sure you're in first make sure you're the first one on the bushes and then line yourself up and start smacking away until you knock everyone out and again make sure you are making frequent saves here in case you do accidentally knock them off the screen and then also into the lead so once everyone is taken care of it's time to make our climb again for this part if you happen to find any health ups along the way make sure you take advantage of them the best you can because we will need the health boost for the later events so make sure you try your best to find them because we definitely need help since we are only allowed to use one character in this entire run for the achievement so just like before, it's going to be a pretty much uncontested race since we knocked out the rest of the competition. So just make it to the finish line and we should be good for the cross country events and we should have our first win on our hands. Also very important that you make sure you keep your weapon going in to the next event since we are going to pretty much get the advantage at the start. So we should now be in the lead. Second event is going to be the obstacle course, which is going to be another race. Make sure you pick Ichijo again, and at the start of this race, there's going to be a very similar trick to last one, which is going to pretty much guarantee us the win. It's super close to the beginning, so you kind of have to be on your toes for this one, so make sure you get ready when it does pop up. Start of the race. Before the gun goes off, make sure you move up and try your best to smack the two characters directly ahead of you. Your goal is to try to be as close to first as possible when making it through that door. It's going to be a little hard since you are the furthest away from the door, but if you happen to end up in either second or third place, you should have a pretty good advantage. Now, start of the second screen. Your goal is to make sure you are the first one to the ladder, but make sure you don't climb up. You want to try to stick to the bottom, and again, like the previous trick, what you want to do is you want to make sure you camp the bottom of the ladder and just keep smacking people as they are trying to climb it. So because the ladder is exactly one character width wide, you should be able to pretty much funnel the rest of the opponents here and just smack them to death. Since you have a weapon, you should have the attack priority and you should be able to eliminate most of them. Now, if you were unlucky and happened to draw an opponent whose character has a ton of health, you might not be able to kill that final person within the time limit. Since you don't have the entirety of the race time limits, each screen has its own time limit. You just want to do your best to damage the character as much much as possible and just run the clock out running the clock out will pretty much end the screen in a draw and skip both of you to the next screen and give whoever's in the lead the advantage so we should be able to start the next screen in first since we technically have the advantage here since we are a little ahead of the remaining player. So start of this screen, you can actually land a few hits in the beginning if you happen to just move slightly down and then throw a hit off as the opponent is spawning in. They should also be smacked by the hand trap and if you happen to have them on low health, they should also be eliminated. You can also try to get them trapped in the water and hit them on the ladder as they're trying to come back up. However, if you don't eliminate them, it's still an easy race just dealing with one person. There is also another ladder in the conveyor belt room which you can try to take advantage of. So make sure 
sure you take advantage of that in case they still aren't eliminated. But if you can't eliminate the competition, it still is, once again, a lot easier to deal with just one person rather than three people. So we have the spring room. Try to be a little careful here. The platforming is a little tricky. My best advice is definitely not to lose your weapon since we do need the weapon to go into the next lap. Then you have the dark room. Again, way easier with less people since it's so much more less chaotic. Once again, try your best not to lose the weapon and make sure you carry it with you. Then we just have a straight shot to the finish line and then we should be able to start the second lap. Again, we're going to stick with Ichijo and again, we should have a weapon in hand which is going to give us a pretty sizable advantage at the start. So we are once again going to take advantage of the trick. So make sure you are as close to first as possible to get into the next room and make that sprint to the ladder the best you can or just get lucky and hopefully the AI struggles to get up and then you can cheese them at the bottom. If you aren't so lucky, you can also try to cheese them from the top, but again, you are wasting more time since you need to wait for them to not only get up, but also climb the ladder. So it's easier to do the cheesing trick at the bottom of the ladder. However, it is possible to do it at the top in case you do have that as an option. So do your best to try to land as much damage as you can with the given time limit and if you happen to be lucky and draw opponents who just have low to normal health, you should be able to eliminate all of them and pretty much have the rest of the race to yourself. So again, finish the race and then also try your best to keep your weapon. If you happen to find any health potions along the way, make sure you take the time out to drink them so we can go into the next rounds as fresh as possible. So cross that finish line and we should be two of four events done with the achievement if we happen to be still in first place. Once you get your score, we're going to start to the next event. It's going to be three rounds of Ball Breaker. Make sure you stick with Ichijo. This is going to be a two on two affair where you team up with the blue trunks person. So to win this, it's going to be first team to break the ball at the middle of the screen. So my best advice for this is to make sure you pick a side and then what you want to do is you want to make sure you are on the top. You want your partner to follow you. So hopefully the AI follows you and is right underneath you. Then what you want to do is you want to start punching the ball. And then as the other team is trying to climb, you want to try to kick them in the face. If you kick them in the face, you should be able to hit them before they can get into your hitting range. So pretty much you are trying to hit them before they can hit you. And you should constantly knock them off of the pole. As long as your AI partner stays underneath you, they shouldn't hinder you since they aren't going to attack up to accidentally knock you out. And then what you can do is you can just take advantage of this sweet spot and just kick the opponent as they're coming up and then just slowly whittle the ball away whenever you have some dead time on your hands. So just make sure you keep up with it and make sure you don't let the AI get too far on their pole. And hopefully your AI partner should help out a little with either distracting them to slow them down or if you're lucky, they'll actually actually hit them but if you happen to be the first person to break the ball you should take the round so just try your best to repeat this strategy for all three rounds and while doing this you also want to try your best not to take too much damage in the start of the round the reason for that is we still need to have as much health as we can going into the final event so be a little careful on that the game can get a little chaotic, but you definitely want to stick to that strategy and that formation. If it's not going your way, what I recommend doing is basically trying to take out your partner. So if they happen to get on top of you and they are just hindering you, what I recommend doing is pretty much getting behind them, knocking them off, and then they should start climbing up behind you. And then you could pretty much have the proper formation where you can again just cheese the AI as they're coming up and making sure you kick them in the head before they can get into range to attack attack you. So once again, use that to take care of round two and also round three, and hopefully you shouldn't lose too much health. Unfortunately, you can't bring a weapon with you and also climb the pole, so we aren't able to take a weapon in to the final event, but that shouldn't be too, too bad since there are going to be weapons provided for us. So again, in round three, just make sure you be a little careful at the top. Don't try too hard to rush to the pole to just avoid the chaos. And then just also try your best to get into that formation as quick as possible and you should be able to just take advantage of the AI. So just use your kicks and then you should be able to take round three as well. Unfortunately, your character doesn't do too much damage to the ball, so it's going to be a little slow. You do have to be a little patient, but again, you're trying to do this, trying to lose as little health as possible and also try to land the final hit.
So we should be able to take Ball Breaker. If we happen to land a significant amount of damage to the ball and happen to get our hits in, we should also add a significant amount to the team total. And then it's going to be on to event number four, which is going to be the Martial Arts Battle Royale. So at the start, if you happen to ever spot a health potion, make sure you prioritize that. We will need a ton of health because we need to get through three rounds of this. My best strategy for this is to grab a weapon as soon as you can and pretty much just turtle in either one of the two bottom corners. So the reason I recommend this is because Ichijo is going to be one of the few characters that does not have a special fighting move, so you're pretty much limited to your bare hands or whatever you can pick up, but thankfully the AI is going to have special moves that is going to run them a big risk if they do them too close to the edge. The reason for that is either they'll knock out the other players off of the edge and get a ring out, or they will accidentally get too reckless and then get a ring out on themselves, which of course we can take advantage of. So try your best to just be on the defensive end and then use your weapon to try to hit everyone if they come your way. If things are getting too crazy, just move to the opposite corner and just keep turtling here. Once you are down to one person, you can just keep up smacking them with the stick and just pretty much just cheese them to death. Try to stay out of their punching range by staying as close as you can to them and you should be able to pretty much whittle their health away just smacking them with the weapon make frequent saves in case they do get away from you and you should be able to take the round easy peasy all right going into round two hopefully you have enough health or you happen to get lucky and have found a health potion again same strategy since we're able to keep our weapon going into this round we shouldn't have to worry about the phase where we need to find a weapon so we're just going to go straight for the corner and pretty much get on to turtling again try your best to take advantage of the in-game save system if things get too chaotic and we're taking too many hits make sure you load up from that save but again what you want to do is you just want to bait the ai over and hopefully have them throw each other off of the stage and we should be able to win mostly thanks to ring outs. So try your best to take advantage of the AI. If they happen to have a jump kick as their special, you can very easily dodge this by just sidestepping and they should be able to fall in and ring themselves out most of the time. All right, round three. Hopefully you get a good draw of opponents. I happen to get three of the tougher characters, the guy with the dragon kick, the guy with the elite guard, and the guy with the super punch. So with these guys, my best advice is just to stick to the strategy and definitely hope that they ring each other out. They do have very powerful moves. However, they can just also use them on each other. As you can see here, I had one guy ring out two people in one punch. So that just leaves me to deal with the last person. Hopefully you do have enough health to go into this final round. If you happen to draw the super opponents, one hit can be pretty fatal since it's going to drain a significant amount of your health bar. However, we can stick to our classic strategy, pretty much just staying as close to them as possible and just using a weapon in hand to just whittle them down. Or we can just stick to a turtling strategy, which involves us just staying in the corner and just swinging a weapon into empty air and hoping that they walk into it and we can just slowly chip them out this way. Again, make frequent saves. If they do ever land a hit on you, it's going to be pretty much game over since they can hit very, very, very hard. But you just have to mind your spacing and just take advantage of weapons the best you can. Or if you get really lucky, what can happen is they can ring themselves out on accident, but that's going to be depending on who you're fighting and what their special move is. So once you finally manage to eliminate the last person, we should take the event. And now that we have the first place in all four events, we just need to get past all of the scoring screen. You should get to the end game awards and then it's going to choose what team that won. We should have won all events and gotten all the bonus points and all that stuff. So Team Niketsu should win and we should get the slew of achievements for this game. So once you get past this and you start rolling into the end credits, we're going to get to the achievement for winning the game at least once. That's going to be for 100 gamer score. Also, because the character we use, Ichijo, is also on the Niketsu team, we should get to the achievement for beating the game using the Niketsu team. And then finally, what we were here for, which is to beat the game just using Ichijo. There it is, 100 gamer score, all three achievements, 300 gamer score, and that's all there is to it.